Namaste. So, after the last few episodes, you should have the framework or the basis for entering into Turiya through the changes in the stages of consciousness. Now, I noticed none of the comments on any of the three previous videos asked about this, asking for clarification or for uh, pointers or bringing up any problems that you might have with the practice. So it seems to me that this practice is probably beyond, it's more advanced than most of you are ready for. But what anybody can be ready for at any time is to go within, establish yourself in the inner consciousness, the inner attention, focusing of the mind within, and then worship the Lord with the five-syllable mantra. Aum Namah Shivaya. This mantra is the most powerful mantra. Of all the mantras there are, it is the chief. Just like Shiva, of all the gods and demigods and other worshipable personalities there are, Shiva is the chief. So this mantra is the key. This will give complete satisfaction take it from me because I'm practicing it. It gives everything required for personal satisfaction as well as spiritual advancement, knowledge, and self-realization. This is my experience. Now, you know, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, I've been practicing Mahashodashi Mantra for going on four years now. And Mahashodashi is the chief, most powerful mantra for Shakti. And Shakti, after I started to chant this mantra regularly, she started appearing in my dreams. She would instruct me and give me all kinds of interesting information, and mostly the personal interaction which over the years has become more and more personal, more and more intimate, more and more direct. And she has, in that time, actually become my friend. And especially in the dream world, she and I are very close, like brother and sister. She's the elder sister, of course. <laughs> but still, God or goddess wants to be close to you. We are the ones who put obstacles in the way by means of cultivation of the ego. So the ego is eroded by divine service, submission to the will of God. This is the ancient path. This is the one that works. This is the one that brings you to the complete satisfaction of all those spiritual desires. So why not give it a try? Aung Nama Shivaya. It's so easy. Just five little syllables plus the pranava, Aung. Now, after I chanted that mantra, the Mahashodashi mantra, for three or four years, she promised me, I will bring you to the feet of Shiva. Now, I knew about Shiva, of course. For anyone who reads any Vedic literatures soon encounters Shiva and his power. He even defeated Vishnu at the sacrifice of Daksha when he was insulted and his wife came there and committed the first sati by burning her body with mystic fire. So then Shiva easily destroyed 
the sacrifice of Daksha and defeated all the demigods, including Vishnu. So there's no doubt that Shiva is the supreme and all others are simply creations and expansions of his. So by chanting this mantra, one invokes the personal presence of Shiva and gets his blessings very easily. And the glories of this mantra are such that it doesn't even have to be chanted externally. It can be chanted completely internally as japa. Here we have japa beads, 108 rudraksha beads. And simply by counting on those beads and chanting the mantra silently, internally, mentally, and thinking of Shiva in any form, he has many, many forms, but thinking of him in any of his forms while chanting this mantra soon brings complete success. You have to try it to really appreciate it. You have to do it and get the result and then you'll say, ah, yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> you know, my whole life I've been driven. That is, I've had some kind of inner tension. You know, maybe it's Mars exalted in Capricorn at 28 degrees. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's the opposition of Mars by natal Saturn retrograde in uh, cancer, um, you know, there, there's this inner tension and the tension has driven me to investigate all areas of knowledge, religion, science, philosophy, meditation, yoga, you know, anything I could get my uh, little, wrap my little brain around, <laughs> looking for the solution. And I can say that after all this time, 75 years on this planet, that chanting this mantra makes me feel at home. Like I finally arrived. I finally got it. I am where I need to be with everything that I need to have. Everything that I've ever wanted is present in this mantra. Everything that I've ever needed and that was causing me doubts and hesitations has disappeared, just evaporated magically. Now, I don't feel any more attraction to elaborate rituals or complicated knowledge or extreme feats of intellectual analysis or you know, any of that. Uh, I feel whole. I feel complete. I feel like Shiva and Shakti are the only companionship, the only friends, the only gods and goddesses that I need. This is after looking into so many different things. Any of you that have been following this channel or my previous endeavors in spiritual life can understand the kind of journey that I've been on. And so for me to say this is very profound. It's very meaningful. And it's very important for those who also want to attain the highest benefit. What can I say? This is my experience. It's not something that I got out of a book. It's something that I encountered in real life, the inner life, through the influence of Shakti. And after being initiated into sannyas by a Shakta guru, which really cemented my personal relationship with her, that led to so many blessings, improved health, increased happiness, enhanced creativity, and so many more. I mean, I could spend a whole video just listing them, which would be boring. <laughs> Rather, it's easier for me to simply give you the method 
by which I attained all these blessings and which is recommended in the greatest scriptures, the Shiva scriptures, the Puranas, Shiva Purana, and the Agamas. The Agamas are the tantras that direct the process of Shiva worship. And they're very important. They give all the details, incredible amount of details on how to perform the worship of Shiva if you're so inclined towards ritualistic worship. However, for me, <laughs> my inclination is to drop all that because I have attained the goal for which it was designed. Now, again, if you go back in the history of this channel, you'll see that I performed extensive and elaborate rituals to worship the goddess Shakti, Durga. And that uh, now I have got the result of those pujas, the result of that sadhana, chanting her mantra hours every day, along with the internal indications that I was on the right track. The external blessings also serve to support and confirm the direction I was taking. As you know, again, if you've been following this channel, from the beginning of this channel, I took a vow that I'm not going to talk about anything just theoretical. I'm only going to talk about things I have personally experienced. So in my personal experience, this mantra, especially when used in the internal worship, in the dream state, is so powerful. Last night, just before waking, I had a dream about Shiva. Shiva and I were skydiving. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. He and I were skydiving. And without parachutes. <laughs> Just diving down, flying down towards the earth. And I said to him, hey, we got to pull up, you know, we got to, we got to somehow, uh, you know, lessen our angle of attack here. <laughs> and, uh, and he just looked at me and he said, watch, watch. And he extended his hands out like this and touched the earth and stopped our fall. And I did too. That was a dream that I woke up. <laughs> so, you see, if you follow this path, this inner path, and I can't speak too much for the outer path of external worship. In fact, uh, I just read a very extensive description of the rites of Shiva in the Shiva Purana. And he says at the end, well, what's the use of all this elaborate ritual when the whole purpose of it is to fuel the inner practice? And that the inner practice is the real practice, the powerful practice, the practice that brings you to realization. Or actually, it's not the practice that brings you. Doing the practice simply clears away all the obstacles to receiving Shiva's grace. And the grace and the blessing of Shiva is what actually gives that highest realization, that most beautiful and most satisfying gift of full enlightenment. So please try it. Make your life successful. Attain the highest that is to be attained and achieve the greatest satisfaction possible in life by chanting this five-syllable mantra. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Tatsa. Om Shakti Om. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs>